You good, Jet? You good? Sweet. Okay, everybody. Hey, welcome to Hot News. Hope you're doing well today. We got some good juicy stories to talk about. But before we do, I want to encourage you guys to check out the two new channels that we're kind of uh, piloting at this point. One is the one I mentioned yesterday, which is our random access podcast, where we're going to go into the behind the scenes lives of content creators. We're kind of starting local. The first one was with We Do Tech. We have another one coming out before this episode of Hot News airs. And there's a giant jet. What the frick, dude? Stop flying circles around us. And we also have another episode that's coming out before this epi- this Hot News even airs, where we have another local content creator. So check that out, subscribe if you'd want to, and just kind of see what life of being a content creator is like. And then secondly, we're piloting, kind of test driving a second channel for Hot News, where we kind of do either deeper dives or more exclusives on that channel specifically. And even the headline of today's Hot News, we are already did a video out on it yesterday. So if you guys want more in-depth or uh, exclusive or first release content for news, we're doing shorter videos that are about three minutes long over on that channel. We're just testing it out for right now, so it might die off, but in case you're interested in checking out quicker, more fast snippets and deeper dives on specific topics that you might want us to cover more on this show, we're gonna do it on that channel. So check that out, link in the description to subscribe or right up there. And with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about about today's headline, which is NVIDIA dropping some research about how they gonna be wrecking AMD going forward. And this is some really intriguing news because this is what we were speculating AMD was going to bring out with Navi in the multi-chip module design. We all know that Ryzen has Infinity Fabric connecting two different core complexes, so it makes it a giant CPU based off of two different CPU setups. And that's what we were expecting Navi to come out with. And then AMD kind of put the kibosh on that saying, no, we're not planning this for gaming anytime soon. We don't really know how it's gonna work. Well, NVIDIA dropping the research on multi-chip modules for uh, at least what it looks like they based on the Pascal architecture with 16 nanometer design. And they were able to combine up to 36 different C- GPU modules, all interconnected, sharing some RAM, as well as sharing a uh, RISC-V CPU. So it's creating this setup that is a giant behemoth of a graphics card, all under the name of one graphics card. And it's a giant beast of excitement. Anyways, shut up, priests. It made sense in my brain. Obviously, this has the biggest implications for NVIDIA in the cloud compute, high performance compute server environment. And it's not likely to be something that's going to directly get implemented into consumer graphics cards anytime soon. However, it does make it so that AMD's offerings of their instinct GPUs, it's not as scalable or as convenient as NVIDIA solution would be where you can just kind of scale up for your needs and buy based on cost. And then you just add GPU modules in there. It's possible that NVIDIA could be bringing this out to consumers in the future, probably not with Turing at all, probably not even with the seven nanometer GPUs that we're expecting. But further on down the line, we could see them reintroduce the concept of a multi GPU graphics card. What was the last one that they did? So this GTX 690 and the Titan Z. So it's been several generations since we got a multi GPU and that could be due to a whole host of issues. But as we go further down, in the architecture in nanometers, it could mean that we have better efficiency, which means that they could cool them properly. And if they can design the interconnect to make it faster and more scalable than SLI ever was, it could be something really good. But you know who wasn't content to just let NVIDIA have all of the multi GPU glory with all these new fancy interconnects that they're designing. Intel. Intel wasn't content because they unveiled their Intel CXL technology at Intel Interconnect Day, which I'm so glad that's a thing. Anyways, they detailed their CXL technology and how it's going to interconnect different parts of a system and allow you to have multiple modules that interconnect in a way that's faster than PCI Express is right now. And in fact, it would be on par with what we're expecting uh, the specification for PCI Express 5.0 to be. So quite significantly faster than what's on the market today as far as interconnects. And it could be that Intel would bring this out for their GPU department when they launch those next year for Project Z. So we could expect that both Nvidia and Intel are going to absolutely dominate the cloud server market, which would mean that they have more money than AMD, which would mean that they would be able to bring out better cards for the consumer with all of their R&D budget. And that's gonna, I mean, 
AMD is just, I, I, don't, I don't see how they get back from this because the consumer desktop market is a small portion of where they need to make their cash. They're definitely winning with Epic. They're taking some market share away from Intel. But it doesn't look like there's many high hopes for what AMD can bring to the server GPU department, but we'll, we'll see. And speaking of server stuff, Intel also, uh, we, we talked about in the previous hot news that they're gonna have Optane DIMMs that allow you to get 512 gigabytes per DIMM stick on a server rack, which means you could have freaking terabytes of RAM on one single system because currently DDR4 is capped out at 128, but that's gonna come at a pretty penny because the 512 gig module is costing just under $8,000 per stick. $8,000 per stick. So if you want a terabyte, that's $16,000. That's cray cray, but uh, it's definitely worth it if you need all of that capacity and maybe not as good of a speed as DDR4. And then in case you're interested and you oh so love Microsoft's web browsers, Intel Explorer and Edge, well, you're gonna be disappointed because they're bringing back Edge, but now with Chromium, you can actually test it out as the preview builds are now live. So go ahead and enjoy that if you care at all, but you might as well just get Chrome, I don't know. Anyways, and then we've got some leaked images of GTX 1650s now hitting the interwebs video cards publishing both Zotac, Palette, and I believe Gainward models. So if you're at all interested in seeing those, it looks like they won't have power connectors. So less than 75 watt power draw, just drawing it all from the PCI Express slot. And we're expecting around 1050 Ti level performance for about the same price. Good job, Nvidia. We'll see when these come out. I'd like. They're supposed to be released later this month. I don't know. I'm not terribly excited for these. And then, in case you wanna be run over by robots in Walmart, it's now a thing because they are going to be adding a ton of robots to their retail stores, mostly in the way of like floor cleaners and shelf scanners and you know, just things to work the, the bay to kind of help unload pallets and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. Ooh, those 24 hour ro Walmarts where they have robots just kind of clean the floors. What happens if you try to ride one? What happens if you put a cat on top and it wants to ride it? Can we turn this into an amusement park? I think Walmart has a glorious future ahead of it. I think it's gonna be super creepy at like 3 a.m. when there's like no one in the Walmart and mm. just let a robot go across the aisle like that. Bro, what if they go rogue and start like getting the kitchen knives and attaching them to the floor cleaners with the arms that they don't have to grab them off the shelves and attach them? Anyways, let's talk about a dystopian reality and that's YouTube is bringing interactive stories to their original content, just like Bandersnatch and I guess Minecraft story mode. Cool. Who watches YouTube originals? A few of you, not many. Moving on. In case you uh, like to get new Macs very frequently, and in case you don't know how to transfer your own data, and you've been using somehow genius support to do that, it's been costing you a pretty penny. $100 for data migration to a new Mac. Well, guess what? Guess what? It's free now. What world are we living in when Apple actually makes the right choices for consumers? We had a week and a half ago that they apologized for their keyboard issues, and now they're dropping the prices on something that should have been free all along. Where is Steve Jobs' ghost and why is he not haunting Tim Cook even more? Because this is not Apple's policy to make things better for the consumer. And in the uh, most FUD title headline we have for today, China wants to ban Bitcoin mining or at least uh, it depends on who you ask about that. So the National Development and Reform Commission published a, uh, I guess, document about how they want to encourage, restrict, and eliminate different portions of the industry. And it seems like uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency mining is high on the priority list of things that need to be dealt with. So a state-owned newspaper, the Securities Times, said that it distinctly reflects the attitude of the country's industrial policy towards the cryptocurrency industry. However, a managing partner at a blockchain investment firm said that NDRC's move is in line overall with China's desire to control different layers of the rapidly growing crypto industry. It does not yet signal a major shift in policy and that, quote, I believe China simply wants to reboot the crypto industry into one that they have oversight on, the same approach that they took with the internet, which, I mean, I don't understand how they would have oversight on something that is supposed to be, I guess, mostly private when you have a public wallet, not everything can be completely private, but this the whole point of cryptocurrency is that you try to keep it out, like the government can't regulate it. I suppose that they could regulate the mining industry, but it, as far as the crypto industry as a whole, they're gonna have a hard time doing that. But uh, you know, 
they, they lock down the internet, so they'll just lock down payment methods. and They'll make it harder for people to use it, but it's not going to be impossible for anybody to use cryptocurrencies to kind of get around uh, and transact. So we'll see where that develops. And you know what else is developing? A new Star Wars game. So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order has been teased Tweezed? Teased on the official Star Wars Twitter page. So we're expecting more information to come out on Saturday about this brand new game from Respawn, the people behind Apex Legends, and it's supposed to be a single player campaign. So we'll see how this goes and hopefully it will put an end to the dearth of freaking uh, crappy Star Wars games that have been out there. And then in case you've ever wanted the Game of Thrones theme song on floppy drives, link up there or in the description, you're welcome. And finally, in the best news ever, electroshock therapy finally confirmed to work. So researchers at Boston University were zapping old people and young people's brains with alternating current to kind of just try to see, hey, can they have better memory recall if we just zap them in the right way? And it turns out when you zap older people who are getting about 80% of the memory activities right, they turn into young people who got 90% of the memory activities right. And then when you zap the young people who are getting 90 percent on average they decreased as well so brain therapy with lasers and shocking coming to you in a theater near you so that you can remember the movies that you watch and if you want oled panels and monitors and not just on your tv it looks like we should be getting them soon joled which is a great company name for somebody who produces oled panels is anticipating producing about 220 thousand panels of 10 to 32 inch OLED panels per month. So that should mean that we're gonna get new uh, monitors coming out soon that have OLED and not just like the Pro Art line from Asus, which costs 6,000 freaking dollars. <laughs> I'm just poor people, that's it. And then the US Congress is proposing a bill to kind of ban certain features on social media platforms that uh, trick people into accepting giving away their privacy rights as they term it, the dark pattern designs, so that when you accept something, it's not fully disclosed that you're really giving them access to your contact list, to your history, all of that kind of stuff. They wanna make it illegal to do that and then have better disclosure when it comes to people signing away their privacy rights on social media. But while that one sounds like a good regulation, although I'm sure we have plenty of viewers who are just like, no government regulations, good regulation. Screw the government. Anyways, not talking about that. Let's talk about a new screw the government uh, legislation as well, which is that there's been a bill proposed that would ban the IRS from developing its own free e-filing system for taxes, thanks large in part due to lobbying by Intuit, uh, who owns TurboTax, H&R Block, all of these uh, tax return filing systems that have built a gigantic industry, they've lobbied, and now a bill has been proposed to make it so that the government won't put forward something that's free. And out of the 70% of the American population that is allowed to use free e-filing that already exists by the IRS, only 3% actually use them, but this would restrict it even further. Why? Why the frick? Why do you even have to take this away? It's such a dumb thing. Why would you make it illegal for the IRS to do this, provide a service that's good for the entire US populace to use, even if they don't? at least having the option to ban something that just will just it's not even going to destroy an industry because there's already a free e-filing system and they've built a massive multi-billion dollar conglomerate on top of it what's the problem here what the stupid stupid you know what else is stupid uh, well actually maybe not go with that segue <laughs> donald trump <laughs> tweeting out about uh i guess what would be considered a uh i guess re-election campaign video it had brian cranston and amy schumer and then Kim Jong-un was in it as well. But uh, it, it featured one of the th uh, themes from freaking Dark Knight Rises where Batman's in the pit and he's trying to get out. And it's just like, okay. Well, apparently Warner Brothers was like, yeah, they didn't seek the right to use that copyrighted music. So if you go to view the tweet now, which just says make America great again, it says video not displayed because it has been removed due to infringing the copyright holder. So fantastic. Good job, President. Bad segue early, calling him stupid. Okay, I've got two little uh, fabulous what the heck news titles for you today. The first is that a, a woman called 911 the police responded because she believed that there was a home invader. They surrounded her house. They called for the intruder to come out. And when it didn't come out, they went in with the guns drawn, trying to find the intruder. They went to the bathroom because that's where they heard the rustling. And there it was, sweet little Roomba, uh, cleaning the bathroom, doing a thorough job. And good job, good job calling 911 over your gosh dang Roomba that's cleaning your house. 
Like, aren't those on a schedule? You should know that that's freaking happening. And then the worst headline, and if you're squeamish, you might want to turn off now. Maybe all those missing bees are just in our eyeballs eating our tears. Because it's been found that a Taiwanese woman had four bees embedded in her eyes, and they were uh, feeding on her tear ducts. Reese is leaving, and I'm ending hot news. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to this UFD Tech channel to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Get subscribed to Random Access to stay up to date on our content creator podcast, and get subscribed to our hot news second channel that's going to feature standalone videos, slightly uh, deeper dives, and potentially more comment or content in the future. But right now, we're just kind of trying things out. So if you're interested, check that out. Hit the like button. I already said all of that. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you smile face again in the next video. Love you too. Bye.